welcome to this video. Part 3 So, welcome to part 3 in this series on mixing vocals. Um, today we're going to be looking at this awesome track again by the band Hot Moth. And in the first week I covered lead vocals, the second week, or video, sorry, I covered um, kind of thickening and effects and things like that. And this video, this week, this film, I'm going to talk about backing vocals, kind of harmonies and some sort of stacked vocals as well. So first we're just going to look at quite a simple harmony. Um, and then I'll move on to some of the more intricate stuff where I've layered up some kind of harmonies and made them into almost a choir, if you like. So let's look at what we did last week. We'll start with the verse and just putting a simple harmony into the background on, on this verse. So what we ended up with was the main lead vocal and then we malted that onto another track, which is just to mean duplicate onto another track and kind of overtly affected this duplicate with a load of distortion and then used that as a, as a parallel effect really. So just blended that in so we had enough of it and it ended up sounding thus. It's the lead. And the parallel. Okay, so we're familiar with that now. It's got a delay throw on it and a bit of reverb. That's it. So I'm going to deactivate this throw because that's going to get a little bit annoying. And we're going to look at this track here that I've got. I'll just get rid of any processing to start with. Um, so this is just a falsetto double tracked thing that's been um, bounced down to a single stereo track, but it's two, two tracks of vocals singing the same thing, panned either side, and they would have had the same processing on the way in. So there's a little bit of 1176 for compression, and it was through a Vintech um, preamp EQ, which is an, a copy of a, a Neve 1073. And then, so that's picking out a line there. This is just to give it a lift, like production wise. Uh, this happens twice in both verses, and it's just to kind of give the lead vocal a lift. Some false truths will cause wounds to hurt me. Okay. So first of all, let's just blend that in with the lead vocal with no processing on it at all. I'll mute the reverb so we can just hear what, what our starting point is. Okay. So that sounds cool. I think it just needs evening out a little bit and we can do some cool stuff to it just to give it some personality. So one of the main concepts I want to talk about when it comes to backing vocals is setting them apart from your lead vocal. And this is important, especially as in, um, like in this case, where we've got the same singer doing all the parts. So to avoid it all kind of blending together, First of all, they're singing different things, so that's helping that. But we can also add to that by using things like a different compressor, a different EQ. Um, we can EQ it in a way that's going to help the lead vocal. Um, so what I've done here, to start with, I've got the Pro Q2, and it's pulling out a load of mid-range and a load of low-end. Now, I don't need much low end because this is just supposed to be an airy falsetto thing. It's just to back up the lead vocal. And the reason I've pulled out the mid range is to let that lead vocal come through. Is that's, that's where a lot of the detail is. So it's kind of scooping it and placing it into the background. And this is a similar concept that you would use if you had a kind of pad or something or a guitar. Like You can think of it in a similar way. And 
also let's go <laughs> let's touch on what I was talking about before um I was describing it as the mechanics of of a, a vocal or any kind of track um literally for want of a better word because it's I'm already cringing myself out but what I mean is looking after the kind of fundamentals in terms of dynamic and frequencies before we get carried away with things that are going to add to it in terms of vibe and character so um this is especially useful if you're quite new to to mixing is having a bit of a method and it's still a method I use to a large extent so the first EQ I've got going on is pulling things out it might be correcting any kind of weird resonances and things like that so it's kind of getting your vocal into the ballpark of how you want it before you get carried away with other processing and this is the same with kind of cutting out any unwanted breaths jangling of keys all that kind of stuff so just kind of cleaning up the project before you start that's a general thing that's a good habit to get into so um, it's already got a bit of compression on on the way in and we're going to add to that to smooth it out further with this renaissance compressor this is quite a clean sounding compressor i would say overall i've got a not that it matters too much but i've got a ratio of sort of four um slowish attack slowish release that's what i ended up on at the time um i mixed this five plus years ago so i'm relying on myself having done a fairly good job at the time some of the bits i had to swap out so i don't have this the same plugins anymore but I left on as much as I could so that it was kind of representative of what, what was there before. So let's try this in the mix and I'll just stick this compressor on and we'll see what it does. And the next bit with the same compressor. Okay, so um, there's a bit of a, a gain difference there. So it was a bit louder, but hopefully you can hear it kind of evened out the dynamic and it brought out some detail as well. So next thing I added was a bit of decapitator as with the lead vocal, just to give it a little bit of character. And uh, this is a, I've started off, I think with the classic rock Vox preset, but it's been tweaked and I've just got a tiny bit of it in the mix. So I'll bung that in and see what it's doing. Okay, sorry, let's all reverse round, an idiot. So that's just given it a little bit of character, helped it, helped it to cut through a little bit, particularly the brightness. So I've turned the tone all the way up, I've distorted it fairly heavily, and then backed off the mix. So it would have started. I want to, but I want to all day. So you can hear what that's doing, and it's just a bit of that in, just to give it a cut. So that's had some really positive effects. I've got it turned loud in the mix at the moment, just, just so that we can hear what's going on. And that's something I do a little bit anyway. So you can kind of adjust things and then back it down and, and just blend it back into where it sounds good. It's a bit like using a reverb, I suppose. Sometimes you wanna overdo the reverb, back it right off till you can barely hear it and then find a middle ground. And that's, that's a good way to try that out. Um, so this has had some positive effects, but it's brought out our S's and things a bit too much. So I'm going to stick a de in here. Had this been a lead vocal, like we did on, on in the other video, in video one, um, I would have probably got in there and done some automation with the S's, like on this track here. But I'm going to rely a bit more heavily on the de purely because it's a more of a background element of the track. And the more layers you have going on especially if they're duplicating the same thing that s is getting duplicated every time so they, those s is going to start sticking out more and more so this is where i feel i can be quite sort of liberal with the de-essing and it's not going to matter too much in context so here's the de-esser some false truths will cause wounds to hurt me without it some false truths will cause wounds to hurt me. So that's definitely brought it down quite a bit. So we'll leave that on there. Um, 
yeah, so let's place that in the mix next with the Diesa. I want to find a slightly more appropriate level for it as well now. Some false truths will cause truths to hurt me. Okay, and that's a kind of cool level. Um, it just wants to give these bits a lift. I don't want the listener to be like, oh, there's a load more voices in there. It's just a kind of fairly subtle little layer in there. Um, now we've got a chorus going on here, courtesy of the Air Chorus, which comes with Pro Tools. And this, again, is to give it its own identity away from the lead vocal. Um, modulation is, is a valid way to do this. So I'll put, put it in and solo so you can hear what it's done. I want to, but I won't do all day. I want to, but I won't do all day. Yeah, so that's kind of cool. And sometimes you find yourself being quite over top. Uh, and sometimes you find yourself being quite over the top of this stuff when, when the track's in solo, especially if it's something quite buried in the mix. You have to do quite a bit of it. Same with delays and stuff for it to actually have a effect. So if that seems a little bit heavy handed, hopefully when I play this in the mix, it won't, it won't seem so heavy handed. And then without that chorus. Yeah, to, to me, that gives it a little bit of a sheen and just separates it from the vocal a little bit. Um, lastly, I've got a Mag EQ on here, Mag EQ, however you want to say it. It's just doing a little bit of brightening. Um, this is what I used on the lead vocals that happens, but again, if you're finding you're still wanting more separation, you could try a different EQ that's going to have a slightly different character. So let's listen without and with. That's kind of cool. I'm going to back that off a touch. Take the. Okay, and then we're just going to send it to a bit of reverb. And in this case, I just sent it to the same reverb the lead vocal was going to. Okay, um, again, another thing you could do is send that to a different um, reverb or, or delay or whatever. But in this case, I kind of wanted it to some extent to blend with the lead vocal um, in the sense that I, I want this to just be this subtle thing giving it a lift. So this is what we've ended up with. Let's listen to that whole verse with that backing vocal and hopefully you can see the point of it. I never run. With the cool delay throw as well. Let's reignite this and reignite our um, our passion for life. I never run, but they said I gone. Hey, what again? I want to, but I want to. Oh, they set aside. A hey, busy mind. Some false truths will cause truths to hurt me. There we go. So hopefully our passion for life is reignited and we can have a look at the chorus. Um, the chorus has got a similar kind of thing going on, so we don't need to go into too much detail on this. Um, so I'll mute any BVs on the chorus. Just to remind you, this is where the chorus was when we last left it. Okay, so much like in the verse, there's just a few of the phrases that are being lifted with the backing vocal. And in this case, it's a harmony, and we've printed a double track here. Be there, be okay, 
and then we did another one, same harmony, just sang softer. Okay, and you blend those together. Okay, um, this is another good thing to bear in mind. You can start making these differences and giving these vocals their identity at the tracking stage. So getting someone to sing in a different way, getting someone to sing in a different mic, getting someone to sing at a different distance, in a different acoustic space. Sometimes you might record someone in an echoey hallway or something like that, just to give it its own kind of vibe. Um, <clears throat> Yes, so again, let's see how life changing that is in the chorus. Well, I guess you had to be there, cause you haven't got a clue, babe. What you think you had to break it, you want to have that walk. Okay, so that's how the, the chorus ended up. So we've got our lead vocal our malt with the distortion on it, the space echo just bumbling away in the background, and, and it's triple tracked, so the same performance sang two more times, panned either side. Lovely stuff. Um, there's not much more to say about that other than I think the only difference was I sent the backing vocal to a different reverb to give it more of like this group feel. So I had a reverb going on, uh, this one called Room here, which is pretty much how I had it going on. There's an, an EQ missing that would have been pulling out a little bit of low end and stuff, I think. But this is what I was sending the guitar and the bass and stuff to just to kind of help glue it together a little bit. Um, so let's just solo that vocal. Where is this guy? Okay, here it is. So it's a kind of short room sort of sound, and that just helps that sit behind, gives it its own thing again, rather than everything just going to the same plate reverb that I've got in the chorus. Okay, so that's our kind of harmonies looked at. Now we're gonna look at the outro of this song, and I thought this would be interesting just because there's a lot going on vocally here. So we've got this lead vocal here, which is just a kind of, um, it's a similar processing to the chorus, um, but I haven't bothered with the malt. I've just distorted a bit more on the main track. And this is sitting in the mix a little bit more. This is where we've got kind of guitar solos going on and all this kind of stuff. So let's mute the, the other backing vocals while we look at this. So that's what that, that's doing. I was just chucking in the, the the reverb and the delay so you could hear that. The reason it suddenly went quiet is just that automates down to make space for a guitar solo. Yeah, so that's pretty much the same, although I've added this black box, which is kind of saturation as well. And I think I just hit the preamp and stuff a little bit harder when I was recording that vocal. It's also backed up by the space echo. Well, I guess you had to be there. Well okay, so that's again giving it some saturation and sitting it in the mix a little bit. Didn't bother with the micro shift on that one, although the micro shift still exists on, on the main vocal. Um, because it doesn't have to take so much centre stage at this point, this is kind of more in the mix, it's a repeated phrase going on. Um, let's kind of build this up, so we'll look at the stacked vocal last. There's also this little phrase here that comes in in the second half. Save for a long time. 
There we go. So that's just, a, again, another doubled kind of counterpart melody that's going on. It's got, I, I've put this on again, because I had to kind of rebuild this mix a little bit. So this is a, a Neve emulation, driving the input a little bit. I don't really need to go into that too much other than it's got the same kind of stuff going on. Bit of compression, bit of saturation, de then a bit of character EQ, bit of micro shift. Um, sounds like, yeah, I went went to town a bit more on the micro shift to give it that kind of chorusy effect, which just sort of, again, helps that give it, give it its own identity a little bit, which helps it to stand out in the mix. Okay, so lastly, let's move on to the, what I've called the choir here, and we'll get rid of any processing. So what I did here, well, I'll, I'll, sh I'll introduce them gradually. What I've done here basically is made a mix of, what is it, five different BVs, different harmonies and things, and I've sent them to an auxiliary. So we've made a mix as if this was a, a group of people, but it's just one Matthew. Okay, so we've got, let's go from the beginning here, I should be able to introduce them gradually. Well, I guess you to be there well I guess you had 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 to be there there you go so yeah, that was really fun to do. We kind of, that was a part he and I kind of came up with on the fly and it really adds to this epicness of this outro. Now, um, easier than kind of trying to process each one of those on their own, it makes sense to make a blend and send it to an auxiliary. Um, this is gonna marry the part together a little bit more and it's also just easier, it means that I can process them all as a whole. I'm still free to automate it a little bit, say that I want the one of the high parts to increasingly get more prominent. I could automate that within this chain. And worst case scenario, I can just split one of them off on its own, process it differently if I need to later. Okay, well these vocals kind of come in and out at the end like this, woo! So what I'm gonna do is just disable my um, automation so if you look over here this is my choir automation another useful thing about having them all on one um, auxiliary is I can automate the whole thing up and down as one um, so I'm gonna get rid of that for now so that I can balance this how we want um, so let's listen to it I'll just leave all the other vocals in and I'll kind of blend it into where it sounds roughly good Cool. So yeah, that sounds pretty good. It's a little bit murky. So let's do a little bit of processing on it. I had some EQs and things on the main one here. Um, they probably would have been doing this kind of high passing and stuff, but that would be more something I would have done as I was tracking. So let's just treat these as a whole. Um, similar sort of scenarios, what I've done with the the harmonies is just pulling out that mid range again. So they're a bit scooped, pulling out any low end that I don't really need. So this is kind of, again, what we're talking about, doing the um, necessary things to it first before we get carried away with effects and all this sort of stuff. So that's gonna sit it in a bit, hopefully. Cool, 
So again, that's sort of a little bit louder than we need it, but just so you can hear what's going on. That's all the kind of housekeeping part of the EQ and stuff done for those backing vocals, hopefully. Might need to do a bit more at the end. Um, but now we've got more of a character EQ going on here, and I've just given it a massive boost of 6 dB, the high shelf from kind of 6, 7K upwards. Um, this is coffee. I think this is a simplified version of it. This was very, very cheap or very um, free version. It's by Acoustica Audio. Really love this plugin so far. This is a pull text style EQ. And I've just boosted this top end by well, like 6 dB, as I've said. Blah, blah, blah. Let's have a bloody listen to it, shall we? So yeah, it makes a huge difference. Some of that is purely the gain, but it's getting the part of the vocal I want out. I'm kind of further thinning it out, but also adding some real character to it, I think. Um, then we've got SPL Iron. It's a really cool compressor, plug-in alliance. Um, can't afford a real one. Okay, so that's pinned it nicely. Um, those more astute of you in the audience, mum, uh, should notice that the detrimental effect this has had, yet again, is brought out all the S's on the guess you have, um, and all that kind of stuff. So then we naturally have a de next. Something you may also be saying to yourself, you astute people out there, is that, um, why am I putting this? I talked about doing all the kind of dynamic stuff, the mechanical stuff to the vocal before getting carried away with um, kind of character EQ and stuff. There's also something to be said to having a EQ before a compressor and the way it affects things. And this is probably a whole other video in itself, but um, pushing the top end of something loads and then because the compressor can kind of darken things and counteract it just has a nice effect sometimes and this is one of those cases so that's why I've done that and now we're going to have to DS it okay and that's DSing like minus 12 dB on the S's and the T's um, never get away with that on a lead vocal or anything, but again, all these vocals are doing the same phrase, so we can be pretty brutal with that. I don't think I got in and, and did anything crazy on these, no. So that was enough. Um, it's just all been kind of balanced as it's gone along. And then still I've added a little bit of um, limiting on here. Uh, there's nothing wrong with doing this if, if you really want to pin something. I wanted this backing vocal to be almost a solid block so that I could automate it up and down as I wanted it. And I really want it, you know, it's such a dense part of the mix, this part, that I could be quite brutal with it. Um, the thing about doing this is obviously we've done EQ and things and then the more you're crushing the... Um, audio the more you're undoing that to some extent so there's still a point doing it before because you're helping out your compressors and stuff this would be even worse if I hadn't done any of that and tried to do all the corrective EQ right at the end but um, just to be on the safe side I've pulled out some of the the bits that had got too too lively and high passed it again at the end of the chain so yeah with this I'll play it without these two and then put it in
there we go. So the limiter is just taking off the, the peaks on that. It's just the bits that are still kind of poking out. That limit is helping with that. And then just a further bit of sculpting with the Pro Q2. Um, and then I've sent these again to the overall room over here. And this is where, naturally, I had this plug in here. This was an old EQ. Um, so I would have been pulling out a bit of low end here. Well, I guess you had to be there. Well, I guess you had to be there. Well, There we go. And that, kids, is why we put our reverbs on our auxiliary tracks, so that we can control just the reverb. <laughs> cool. So there we go. I'm at the end of that now. Such a big subject, and I've not covered everything, and I've only given you this one context, but hopefully this will help you with a few kind of concepts, if nothing else, and just give you a little bit of a roadmap in how that you can go about processing these kind of vocals and, and things. So let's have a listen to that whole section. I'm going to um, put the automation back on and hope that my levels are pretty much how I had them in the original mix because I've played around with other plugins and things and listen to how those are all sitting in there. And my uh, Pro Tools just shat itself at the just the right point there. Thanks, Pro Tools. So there we go. Would obviously require a little bit more tweaking, but hopefully that's of some use to everyone. Any questions or anything, ask in the comments. Um, general, any questions? I'm going to do a video at some point where I just try and answer some questions because people tend to ask a few on on the videos and just generally. So. Obviously, if I can be of any help, I will. Thanks very much for watching. Um, take it easy. I've turned this off now. Do, do, ga, do, do, do. Bye.